Hi, I'm Bob Cortez, and I'm your candidate running for State House District 30. I'm humbled and honored to earn your vote. So running for office is about being part of public service. In my case, I decided to run for office because of what I called was a burning issue. And my burning issue was back in 2009, running a small business and the economy starting to go bad. I had to do something about it. I could not just let government try to interfere with the way we ran our business. So instead of complaining about it, I actually decided to roll up my sleeves and run for office. And in my first time ever running for office, I was able to win an election to run for the city of Longwood uh, Commission. You know, after losing the election in 18, one thing that happened was we returned from, we went from public life into private life and doing things that we were accustomed to doing back when we were not running for election. One of the things was we didn't have an election to have to go out and do a fundraise or public events that we had to do or phone calls from constituents saying, hey, I need your help. Although ironically, even though after I lost the election, still almost a year after, I still were, were getting phone calls from constituents asking for help. And even during COVID, I would get calls from people asking for help on the unemployment issues. And I did not turn them away. I, because I, the public servant in me, I still addressed them. I still helped them in any which way, shape or form I could, because I, I still had the context on how to do it. And I did it because it was the right thing to do. Now, my wife and I, obviously, uh, we were enjoying our private life. We were enjoying our children, our grandchildren and traveling and doing all the things that, uh, uh, you know, somebody in private life with their family enjoys doing it. And another thing that happened after the election is, you know, my, my parents. So I have my elderly parents, uh, mom and dad. Dad turned 80 years old, and they lived by themselves in the home in Altamont, but the home became too big for them and too onerous. We brought them in and moved them in with us here now on the compound, and now they live with us here. I take care of them, I'm able to take them to doctor's appointments and handle everything because dad even stopped driving after last year. So many things happened after the 18 election that brought us to handle things the way somebody in private life does it. And I was, you know, one of the good things that happened from losing the election was that I was be able to be here to do those things, to travel, to take care of my parents and do all the things that normally I would have not been able to do or would have been difficult to do because of part of being in the public service. Do you want me to continue now? Yeah. You know, and uh, part of being a family man is having the right person by your side. And that right person who unequivocally has been meet with me in the ups and the downs, in the celebrations and victories and in the heartbreaks, was has and always will be my wife, Virginia. You know, without her, I would not be here today. Without her, I would not be uh, willing to serve uh, the community that, w that we do. Without her, I would not have been able to be a great father to my children, grandkids to my uh, grandfather to my grandkids. It, it's without her, it's definitely there would not be a Bob Cortez. Um, when I lost the election, the one that held me, the one that talked to me, the one that helped and guide me through, I would say one of my darkest hours was her. And she has been my rock, my support, and even though it's ironic that when I told her that I was considering about running again, in her heart, she didn't want me to. The right thing to do was, in her, she gave me the full blessing. She wrote a note to me that really made the decision. I still carry that note as encouragement. She wrote that the people in Central Florida, House District 30, and in the state of Florida, still need a Bob Cortez. And although she had to share me with the community, she was willing to do that because we still have a lot of good things to do. And she's an amazing woman, and I gotta tell you, from the bottom of my heart, um, I'm glad that she picked me as a husband, and now we're 36 years and going. I hope to continue a long, fruit, fruitful life with her and see our grandchildren grow. 
I'm a person that's very handy with my hands. I've been blessed to be able to do things, watch it once, maybe on YouTube, and get things done, whether it's uh, carpentry around the house, or one of my favorite things is the hobbies with classic cars. I have been uh, a car guy for many, many years. I was the founder of the Longwood Car Show when I was a Longwood City Commissioner. And part of the founding of the Longwood Car Show had to do with my passion for, for cars. Uh, my dad, who has always loved cars, he's been a Chevy guy since I was a kid, he always used to buy Chevy Impalas, and that's what he could afford. But he always wanted to buy a Monte Carlo. Growing up, the Monte Carlo was a higher-end car. He could not afford having you know, a job and three kids growing up in New York. So he always told me the story that he would have loved to have a Monte Carlo. And one day I found the Monte Carlo and I brought Dad. I said, hey, Dad, here's the Monte Carlo you want. How about you and I restore this as a father-son project? And we did. Back in 2007, we started this project on a 1971 Monte Carlo. And we restored it together from the ground up. It took us 18 months, uh, the look on his face coming every day to polish the chrome and do everything on me, working on whether the body work or the interior with a friend of mine. It was, uh, it was classic. To the point when we finished the car in May of 2008, we went on our first car show and he took first prize on his car. Uh, I still have that car today. It's one of my pride and joys and I hope to have that car and pass it on to my children when I'm no longer here. So cars is my biggest passion. I have a 68 Volkswagen also that I'm restoring myself when I have free time. And I love traveling. I am really a traveling guy, mostly cruises. Here's a tidbit. My wife and I have cruised over 35 times because we love cruising. Which one? It doesn't matter. Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, whichever one we can find a good deal on, we go. We have not gone this year, obviously, because of COVID, but we're looking forward to that cruises restore so we can continue to travel and cruising again. I look forward to going to Japan to visit my daughter, my grandkids who are stationed there. I've never traveled that side of the world and looking forward to it. So in all, I'm just a regular guy living in a nice, you know, regular community, nice community that I was able and blessed to bring my children up in the public school system and be part of this community and give back some of the things that this community has given us growing up. So uh, again, it's uh, whether I was driving a tow truck during my uh, tow truck graves or, or driving a bus with a, a core trans shuttle that we, the other business, my brother and I share, it's anything that I think I can do I've never said no, we've done it. And uh, my kids also, one thing we used to do with them, every year we went somewhere for vacation. As growing up, whether it's Niagara Falls or we went to Puerto Rico, we traveled wherever we needed to travel. One key thing was they always knew that in the summertime we were going away on vacation somewhere. And that I instilled in my children and they are now instilling it in their children because they love the upbringing I'm doing that. So again, yes, there's the part of public service, but there's a part of enjoying your life too and that we have taken advantage of that. You know, COVID has affected our lives and, and in fact, will transform our way of living for years to come. And one of the things that it's done for campaigning, you know, the, the old grassroots door knocking has made it a little bit more challenging, but in fact, we thought we were going to get a lot more pushback from residents, uh, seeing somebody knocking on the door, uh, but we have not seen that. We've uh, actually been using, everybody's been using masks to approach uh, the doors and step back away from the door. So we have that social distancing and the, our material has been placed inside of plastic bags to make sure that they're all safe and secure and, and disinfected. So when we hand it to folks, they have something that's clean and COVID free. So. That has been challenging at the most. Uh, we thought we were gonna see a lot of people turning us away. And frankly, I, I've had people that when I knock on the door, 
they're, they've greeted me with this type of comment. They've said, oh my God, somebody that's not the mailman or the Amazon guy coming to see me on the door. So, I mean, we, we've had those uh, things coming forward. Fundraising has been a challenge. And even trying to do events, outdoor events, has been difficult. But nevertheless, we've, we, we're about to close out a election cycle. We've made it through. We've done the grassroots the way that we want to do it. And I think we're pretty satisfied with the outcome. Hi, my name is Christine, and I'm going to be voting for Bob Cortez for Florida State Representative. Well, I think that anyone who talks with Bob for just a few minutes can see that he is truly a man of great character. He really cares about our community. Um, I feel like he is going to represent us very well. I like that he is a businessman. He understands what the average person in the community is going through, and he truly represents us. When Bob was in the State House, he sponsored a bill called the Grieving Families Act and that allows for a family who experiences a loss of a pregnancy to have a state-issued certificate that acknowledges that loss. If you haven't experienced that, it's kind of hard to understand how very important that is, but to allow that kind of closure is something that is very important, and that tells you what kind of a person Bob really is.